particular roles at various times, including with PCHC. So I got to know Bob Peterson a little bit through the, yeah. the ACO and stuff, so. We'll find that we have lots of local connections, I think. Probably. Larry, I knew you looked familiar. I worked for PCHC for the yeah. last- Yeah. Yeah, how are you? I'm well, I saw your name on the list too. And I thought, oh, I wonder if that's the, sh the same Shelly Blaisdell. The one and only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Broke them all. There's two of me. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. It looks like there's a few more. <clears throat> are, I'm expecting a couple more to join us, and plus some from your your group, Larry. So, yep. Give it a couple, yep. another minute or two. A lot of meetings this week, huh, Jane? <laughs> per usual, Louis. <laughs> yeah. Usual. It doesn't seem like it's going to let up any. It's not going to let up any. <laughs> it's the way we get stuff done, though, right? Yeah, well, that's for sure. It's not how we get stuff done between meetings, though. So. That's right. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I need to rephrase that. <laughs> it's how we get to be able to see everybody and then get stuff done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had a good meeting with the uh, EDMC. Uh, Youth, uh, the workforce initiative they got going. Oh, very good. I saw that posted. That's meeting that I yeah. Okay. I think it would be a good uh, fit for them to provide some students to help us out with like charter review. They might even pay them, you know. So, anxious to hear more about that. Yeah, Aaron's Aaron's gonna hook up with Kevin and I and send some information. She's the uh, host, was the host of the meeting. All right. Hi, Diana. <laughs> so Larry, we're waiting for a couple more people from your, from the main council. On yeah, they, they didn't say, uh, they both confirmed they would be here. So, um, I, I hope they're not using the old link. You were very clear saying use this link, but um, they may have gone to the old one. I'm not sure. So they weren't, uh, you got that email. They didn't, unless you forwarded it to them. Um, no. No. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I left call. it up to you to forward to them. But I've been watching on my email. It doesn't look like anybody's gotten on the other Zoom link that I sent out. I would have gotten notice. Um, okay. So you're saying this last reminder you sent out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me forward that to them. Um, but I'm, I also don't think they would have gotten the original one um, because you weren't yet on <laughs> that I'd sent out to a, the local group. So it's hard to know, <laughs> but there's a lots of zoom links to keep track of. So. Yeah. Distribution lists. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah, I just uh, just got a message from Jess saying, am I in the wrong meeting? So she's oh, perhaps. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got the same meeting, so I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now they both have it. They should join us shortly. Okay. We have a new friend visiting Tom. Yeah, we need to see a little cute little face. <laughs> His boots. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Cute as can be. Uh, oh my god and boots like zoom apparently yeah. <laughs> oh good <laughs> oh boots boots likes people he, he he's, uh -huh. he's in the people aren't you huh? on a screen in person oh my word <laughs> Must be, might as well be looking at a little baby and smiling. That's what I feel. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> brings the same sort of reaction. Huh? Well, this is to keep everybody calm. Yes. Yeah. Calm. Therapy. Therapy. There's therapy. therapy dog. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jane, while we're while we're waiting for them, I mean, if for the sake of time, if you want me to just to provide a very general overview, I mean, really. Uh, Jess is the, you know, the the champion and the the originator of the project, but I can kind of get folks up to speed and and go yeah. from there. So I didn't know at what point did you want to have an introduction of the other people that are joining the meeting, or wait till Jess gets on so she hears it too. What would? Why don't we Why don't we wait for Jess only because um, she might have suggestions as to who should be on. Uh, I'm sure she'll have suggestions as to who should be on the. Uh, the task force uh, yeah, for Mellanocket. Yeah. And I think if she knows yeah. who's on the call, that might help inform yes. that. Okay. So, oh, there's Effie. And there's and Jeff. Jess. Very good. Yeah. We get down. Huh? <laughs> oh, there's a nice dog. Look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jess. I only care about the dogs. I was just saying that whether it's a baby on the screen or a dog, we're both all, we're all smiling. <laughs> uh, that's great. So sorry if there's any confusion with the original meeting link or not, but here we all are. It's okay. Here we all are. I had a, a, a Google meet on uh, my calendar I don't... Uh, and it said, I did see it said Jane to send Zoom link and I couldn't find it. So, so sorry, but yeah, no, that's fine. So um, <clears throat> I thought it'd be great just to do introductions so you can see who else is on our age-friendly committee. Um, and then you can go ahead and tell us about the MDASH project. So I'm gonna look on my screen. So people, I think I'm probably the common denominator for other folks um, attending the meeting. Um, Jane Danforth, I work for the hospital, uh, director of grants and community wellness, but and project director for Thrive Penobscot. I'm also a town counselor and chair of the age-friendly um, Millinocket committee. And so I'm gonna look at my screen and I'm gonna throw it to Peter and you can then toss it to somebody else after. <laughs> I am Peter Jameson. I am the town manager of Millinocket. And we will look for Diana. Hi, um, I'm Diana Furukawa. I'm the director of the Millinocket Library, and I'm helping oversee the two AmeriCorps, age-friendly AmeriCorps members we have there. So maybe I'll pass it to those three, <laughs> Barbara, Sarah, and Nicole. I'm Barbara Riddle Dvorak. I'm a new member of the Age Friendly AmeriCorps team, and we're located at the library and we're processing all the wonderful information Jane gave us today. So, <laughs> and I'm Sarah Jandro and uh, working AmeriCorps as well, uh, Age Friendly Millinocket project organizer, and happy to be here. I am Nicole Brennan. I am the Partnerships and Programs Coordinator here at the Millinocket Memorial Library, and I am also helping to oversee the Age Friendly Program here. Let's toss it to Robin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robin Stevens, and I am um, Project Assistant for Thrive Penobscot. How about Brittany? Oh, I'll do <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Brittany. Um, I think I'm just here as a community member of Millinocket um, and helping out with Jane's different projects, um, specifically today, the survey that we'll be looking at. Thank you. And I'm on a phone, so if someone else can. Okay, I'll go ahead to Louis. Volunteer. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Louis and then yeah, Susan. I'm, yeah. I'm Louis Volunteer, Councilor of Town of Millinocket. Tom. And Susan, I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm Tom Malcolm. I'm the fire chief of town of Millinocket, and I'm also the public health and safety officer. Hi, I'm Susan D'Alessandro, and I'm basically just an interested citizen. This is a subject I'm very interested in. <laughs> Go ahead, Larry, Jess, and Effie. <laughs> I guess we can turn it over to you. Shelly, oh no. Shelly, we didn't hear from you. I'm sorry, I'm not doing a very good job today. 
do you want me to go? I'm Shelly Blaisdell. I work uh, as the director of Mobilize Katahdin, which is a nonprofit program started out of the Millinocket Memorial Library with grant funds approximately two years ago. We do resource navigation, assist people with um, basic necessities like heating fuel and food. And um, I help people find medical providers and um, any other resource in the area that they need. We offer transportation. So uh, we have several different areas that we assist folks with. Uh, how about Larry? Larry Clifford. Uh, I'm working with Jess and Epi uh, on the uh, MDASH project, which is uh, municipal data across sectors for health. And as I said before, uh, everybody joined us. I think Jess is probably the best person to, to speak to that project. Well, let's have Effie introduce herself first. Hi, Effie Rourke. I'm a, also a consultant with uh, MCOA, and I've been working on this project almost since the beginning on the uh, the data dashboards and the collection and presentations and um, and stuff like that. And I'll be doing a quick presentation today with some data that we used in Eastport, just to give you um, a taste of what it might look like for Millinocket. Excellent. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. I'm really excited to be speaking with you. And Tom, I'm curious to meet your dog at some point, because I only got a brief look and look like a very nice dog. Um, and uh, so I'm Jess Maurer. I'm the executive director of the Maine Council on Aging. And we are a broad multidisciplinary network of more than 120 organizations, municipalities, businesses, and older people who are working collectively to make sure we can all live healthy, engaged, and secure lives as we age in our homes and communities. That's one long sentence. Um, so um, thank you. And Millinocket is a beautiful place, a place I love to come. So I'm very excited that you are thinking about working with us. So, you know, maybe when when this crazy stuff is over, I can actually meet in person, which would be uh, nice. I think there was the one like in-person meeting I had last year was in Eastport, which was really nice. <laughs> um, one of our other pilot communities. Um, so thanks for um, your interest and thanks for meeting with us. Uh, and I will say, I'm sure that some of um, the brief comments I'm gonna make before we sort of get started into what the MDASH project is, um, is uh, are, are sort of known to you. Um, but I will say that this has been sort of a multi-year process and, and really uh, for us, um, we've been looking at how we can help municipalities um, specifically, you know, towns, um, you're, you've got this great um, uh, aging, age-friendly initiative, age, age, you know, lifelong community initiative, however you're um, describing it, um, but lots of towns don't, and, and lots of towns, um, you know, don't have a lot of people who are saying we want to, um, uh, you know, we want to be helpful, um, and they still are saying we want to figure out how to help our older residents live well in our community. Um, and so uh, this project really started from that place of, um, as we all age, and we know this to be absolutely true, right? I mean, we can all raise our hands, <laughs> um, you know, our, our, uh, what we need changes. Um, and, you know, we are living longer than ever before, and we've just literally outlived our systems that have always worked for us. It's just like that simple. Um, and that's a good problem to have and a really good problem because we're actually, we have a very healthy older population, but it means that we need to be thinking intellect, you know, it, um, um, we have to be thinking um, uh, really specifically about um, uh, the needs of the new needs of our older residents. Um, and so while we have been uh, really looking at sort of a, a basic uh, question, you know, which is about um, how we can um, help um, build integrated systems of formal and uh, informal support that prioritize what we call high, you know, low cost, high value interventions and that build across all systems, right? Volunteers, community-based organizations, municipal services, social services, and healthcare. Um, you know, that's like an all hands on, on deck approach. And we really haven't had uh, a good idea about how to fully engage municipal leaders um, in that conversation, in that partnership. Um, and, you know, and, and it's really important. Um, they haven't capitalized on the good things that are available 
um, that might help them either. Um, and, um, and so, um, in other words, uh, municipalities haven't done, uh, a, haven't built strong bridges is what I want to say um, with healthcare. Although you guys have, by the way, I mean, but really not a normal um, situation in other communities um, or payers, right? I mean, so Medicare Advantage uh, plans have a real um, interest in making sure that people are healthy, but they have no way uh, to really support or engage um, communities uh, in conversations about um, benefits or um, resources that they might have available. So um, we put this project together to say, um, we think it makes a lot of sense to look at data that is useful to a municipality. And so we spent a year long process talking to town managers and city managers and town councilors and city councilors and state officials and, and asking them, you know, what data do you rely on right now and what data would be helpful for you uh, to know about in relation to your older residents. And so we got together a little model dashboard and a little action planning uh, uh, ideas from that first year of work. Um, and then we, they said, we, we don't want to you know, show this to anybody. We wanna pilot it with one community. So we piloted it with South Portland. Um, and so right at 2020, right in the very beginning of COVID, <laughs> as a matter of fact, in March of 2020, we we're supposed to have our first meeting. <laughs> with South Portland, so that, that didn't work out so well. Um, but we did by May have our first meeting. Uh, and so we only got pushed back a couple of weeks, a uh, couple of months, and we really worked um, this process that I'm gonna talk about with you all um, with them, uh, which was to bring you know all of the community partners together um, who have any interest in ensuring that older residents are doing well um, and or providing services to them. And then uh, looking at what data is available um, nationally um, within the state and um, uh, locally um, that would tell a picture about how well older people are doing um, from, again, a municipal standpoint. And there's lots of data out there <laughs> and particularly lots of healthcare data, um, you know, that will tell you how many people in your community have diabetes, you know, and how many community, how many people in the community have heart disease. Um, so we're really saying, well, how many people are, for instance, um, getting, you know, picked up off the floor because they've fallen? Um, and do you know what that number is? Um, and how do you know if they weren't transferred, right? And so who's collecting that data? Um, and, uh, and in South Portland, lo and behold, I tell you the story because in South Portland, um, while we, uh, we saw a lot of um, interesting data um, on their data dashboard, the piece that you know, like struck you in the face was that 20, 25, almost 25% of um, their EMS calls uh, for people over 50 related to falls. Um, and the majority of the people weren't transferred um, to the hospital. And so, you know, you have a big group of people um, who are falling, who are gonna fall again. That's what we know, right? We know lots of national data. Um, and so uh, that's what we do. We bring a bunch of people together, um, including, you know, payers and healthcare and, um, and community leaders together to, to say, let's look at your data. Let's see what data sources you have. Uh, let's put it together. Let's share that information with you. Let's ask you questions. And so, for instance, when we did Eastport's, we, this is Eastport is like got uh, like a very a higher double double uh, than um, than the main average number of older people who are living in poverty, and have a significantly higher retirement income than the county and the and the state average. And you're like, okay, well, wait a minute. Now, what is that all about? Right? What kind of a story is there behind this idea that you have people at a significant rate living in poverty and then another group? And they said, you know, and it was very interesting, unlike I live in Harpswell, unlike my, our, my own community where, you know, you have generations of people from away, um, you know, who literally for 300 years have been in the same house, even though they've never been a main resident. Um, uh, up in Eastport, you've got a lot of folks from the Silicon Valley who just got tired and like moved to Maine, to Eastport, Maine, 
like sight unseen um, and, you know, have bought a lot of property and are, are living there and are retired there um, and have really changed the, in, the income dynamic uh, of, of that town. Um, and there's pluses and minuses about that. Um, but it's, so it's been a very interesting um, sort of conversation uh, about what does data tell us uh, in relation um, to the, the community. So we have a conversation and then we say, all right, well, what does this data tell us um, that we um, that is a priority? And, and like, I just wanna say, we have um, chosen uh, to work in this pilot with communities that have really robust or active or have had um, lifelong community initiatives because there is this other data possible behind the work. Um, and so, you know, when we looked at poverty in Eastport, you know, coupled with when they did a survey of, you know, 300 older people in, in Eastport, um, home repair being the number one thing, and you look at like 26% of their population, you know, I can't remember what the number is, um, of older people living in poverty, and they live in their own houses, um, and they're saying home repair is the top initiative, then we say, okay, well, we're going to focus on that. Um, and so I'm kind of leading you like a little story of the way through, <laughs> like how this works. And then we do action planning uh, and we figure out, you know, what it is that y'all want to do um, based on data and how we might measure if we're successful. And, um, and we help you. We, so we don't do the work. We're technical assistants. We bring models from Maine, from the region. We run the Tri-State Learning Collaborative on Aging. So we're connected to a lot of really um, great micro small rural um, initiatives that are being really effective um, in other communities um, or in other places. Um, and then we will maybe do a little education. We'll bring some people in and say, this is what they're doing in another community and this is how it works. Um, and see if there's bandwidth in your own community to do such a thing. The fact that you have um, a couple of AmeriCorps volunteers uh, is really fantastic um, because that's definitely what we're finding is that um, you know, it's really helpful to have somebody who can help lead some of these processes as we're talking about what it is that we want to do. So I think I'm going to just take a break uh, there because that's um, uh, a whole lot. I can ask if anybody has any questions. And then I think Effie was going to, and, and Larry, if I've forgotten something, let me know. And then, um, and then Effie was just going to give you guys a, a quick run through, um, a, a, you know, brief overview of, of the data from the other communities. So questions? I'm not seeing any. Awesome, right. well, I'll, I'll jump in then so that we have plenty of time for um, questions and discussion and stuff at the end. Um, and as Jess said, oops, hang on, let me share my screen. Um, as Jess said, the, you know, the first um, stage of this is really, um, you know, starting to do some of the, you know, conversations among the task force, but also um, really is me putting together a, a dashboard for you guys. Um, and then you can start to look at the data. And as Jess said, in the other communities that this project is in, um, once we've put together the data and everybody has a chance to look at it and, and think about it, something usually jumps out as um, being somewhat unique to that community. So um, today's, as I mentioned, is focused on what we found in Eastport. And it's just a sample of um, sort of the, you know, what we put together, um, but we thought that this might be helpful for you guys to see. So for all of the communities, we do a lot of basic demographic data. Um, all of this is available from the United States Census Bureau, um, but it helps if you don't have to dig through the hundreds and hundreds of census reports yourself. Um, so we do basic demographics. How old is the population? Um, how many men and women? How many people live alone? All of that. And then we compare it to the surrounding county and, the, and then the state as a whole so that you can see where your, your town is um, aligned with, with the surrounding areas for the county as well as it's aligned or out of step with what's going on in the state at large. And then um, once in a while we do... Um, meetings between all of the M-dash towns and compare them directly to each other, which is really just interesting, but maybe not that useful because of course, comparing Eastport to South Portland just isn't that relevant, right? So, um, so most of the comparisons are um, to your surrounding county. So you can see here, um, 
Eastport is in blue, and we saw immediately that Eastport's population definitely skews older than, certainly older than Washington County and much older than the state of Maine. Uh, we presented in a couple of different ways for folks on the last slide who can see a chart better or folks like me who like to look at spreadsheets or if you want to actually just read a sentence that, that says um, the point straight out, for instance, Eastport's median age is 54, which is 10 years older than the state of Maine. Um, so all of these different ways to sort of put in context the demographics of, of your town. Um, one thing that we focused on a lot is comparing um, what we call working age adults with older adults. So working age is 18 to 64, and this is just some simple division that I do from the, the basic demographic data. And we find out that, um, you know, there's in the story in Eastport, for instance, is very different than the story in South Portland, that in Eastport, there's just not that many quote unquote working age adults compared with the number of people who are 65 and older. Um, and Jess can give lots of good context for how this in, can inform all types of stuff in a community, the number of people available to be in, the, in the, um, the caregiving workforce, for instance, or supporting the property tax base or buying new houses or whatever it is. Um, we found that in Eastport, um, you know, the number in the state of Maine overall is, um, could be better, but in Eastport, it's particularly bad. Um, so for every older adult in Eastport, there are 1.67 working age adults. And then the second piece we look at here that, um, that Jess often talks about and can give lots of context for why it's so important for municipalities to be planning is we also look at that next age band down. Um, so let's say like 50 to 64 year olds, the next group of folks who uh, might be retiring or moving. Um, and we saw that in the next five years, 139 Eastport residents are gonna turn 65. So just that need to plan as the population continues, um, continues aging. Um, this is a snapshot, and as soon as I'm done with the slides, I'll show you the actual dashboard. dashboard. This is a snapshot of the, the dashboard itself, which is looks more like a spreadsheet, again, just to for folks who read data in different ways. Um, and a few more of the things we look at, um, poverty level above 65 plus broken down by men and women. For instance, in Eastport, you can see that the number of older women in poverty is much higher than the number of older men. Um, which probably doesn't surprise you. There's lots of reasons why women take time out of the workforce when they have kids, they're paid less, less over the course of their careers, which means they have less, less money in retirement too. Um, and so that's another piece of the planning process is, is if there's a gender component that you might wanna end up focusing on. Um, along with that, we look at who people live with, whether they're living alone or with a spouse or with another family member or um, in a congregate setting. And just to, for instance, in Eastport, they're focusing on um, housing and weatherization and sort of home modifications. And part of the reason for that is because they have so many older folks, women especially, who are living alone um, and then compounded with the poverty of older women, um, knowing that they have less means probably to maintain their houses. And I'm going kind of fast. When it's your actual dashboard, we will spend a significant time, maybe even a whole meeting or two, really diving into the data and, um, and talking about it and, and pausing sort of at each section for, for you to soak it in. But this is really just a sample of um, what you can expect. Um, this was what Jess was just referencing about what, oh, Shelly, do you have a question? Did you have the um, population for the town? The number? Yeah, that's on, it's on the full dashboard. It's just not oh. on these slides. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you that at the end of the, um, okay. the slide deck. This is what Jess was talking about that we saw in Eastport that um, the median household income is quite a bit lower than the state of Maine, but the retirement income is quite a bit higher. Um, so that to us told an interesting story sort of about that, you know, the haves and the have nots, or like she said, people moving there to retire who have um, significantly more financial resources maybe than the people who've lived there for a long time. Um, so we saw this sort of big income gap that we didn't necessarily see in other towns. Um, we also look at the age of housing and um, as I mentioned in Eastport, we're really focusing on housing as the project. So, but, but we look at this data for all, all of the communities. Um, and you can see here that 
you know, uh, almost 60% of the housing um, that 65 and older people live in is more than 50 years old, which again, you know, probably means that there's some maintenance stuff that needs um, that needs done or, or just upkeep has been a challenge or, you know, older houses just need more work sometimes. Um, so that's something else that we've looked at is the age of the housing stock, because that also can, um, can inform what your project may or may not end up looking like. Um, a few other data points. So we've talked demographics, sort of poverty and income, who people live with, where they live, how old the house that they live in is. We also pulled some disability data for people 65 and old, older and um, to see you know, how high disability rates are for older people in each community. This is also available in the census. So there's reason to believe these numbers are low. Um, for a couple of reasons, either people don't self-report disability because they don't want something to come of that. They don't want, you know, if they think something will result if they say that they are struggling in some way. Um, and then the second piece is that um, lots of older folks might be struggling, for instance, with getting around or mobility, and they just think it's a normal part of the aging process and don't necessarily think it is a disability. So these numbers are probably low, but um, this is another one that could potentially inform how you're thinking about approaching a project or approaching, um, you know, just other services for older people in your community. So we saw in Eastport, almost 25% of residents over the age of 65 uh, reported ambulatory difficulty. So maybe transportation could be a, you know, a focus or um, a ride share program or something. And I don't, I don't want to jump too much to the projects, but it's just to connect the dots on, um, on how the data can inform what you end up selecting to do. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing a second, and then I'm going to reshare to show you what the actual dashboard looks like, which is really just a nicely formatted spreadsheet. Um, so this is, um, this is the actual dashboard that we put together for eSport. You can see I, I did this version of it on December 1st. Um, we've set up the expectation with communities that they will get a fully refreshed dashboard once a year as part of this project. Um, so, you know, we work off of the data that we have, and then when new census data comes out or the new updates are made, then I go back in and, and tweak it a bit if it needs to. Um, so this is set up in the same way as those slides where it's comparing the town is, is the column over here and then the county, and then the state of Maine. And then over here, this, these are the actual census reports that this data is from, if you're interested enough to go look through it yourself. Um, so Shelly, you asked if the population is on here. That's the first, um, the line here, the number of people. And then from there, it sort of goes into households, which is um, can be a little bit tricky when we start talking about people versus households versus householder. All of these are just thing terms that they use on the census and so I try to be really diligent about um, putting exactly the phrasing that the census uses so that it's very clear if it's people or households. Shelly did you have another question? No I just know that like we usually with a household you average for four people per household just to average out how many people like you assist with different resources is that the same do you know? I do not know off the top of my head but sounds reasonable to me. I, I would tell you, um, <laughs> just looking at the numbers, that, that wouldn't play out here in Eastport. Because um, if your total households uh, are, well, are, you know, you double the number yeah. of total households, there are probably more households. And, and you know, we you would see that when you get to the living alone data, um, for sure. Um, there's, I mean, the, you know, typically about a third of older Mainers live alone and particularly older women are living alone more than older men are and have less income, you know, typically. So these are all like data points that we're parsing out because we know, you know, sort of what the, what the challenges they bring are, mm -hmm. right? If you live alone and you're an older person, you don't have a built-in informal care, informal caregiver, even just to get you groceries or cook a meal or help you up if you can't get out of a chair, right? I mean, these are basic stuff um, that having somebody that you live with is really helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. And I get questions like that all the time. And usually Jess and I have to go back and like dig through the, 
very boring technical documents on the census website to find out, well, what do they mean when they're defining, you know, I can't remember, it, it might have been households, but there was another term like that that seemed really straightforward and we had to go back and figure out what exactly they were talking about. It was um, retirement income. Oh, that's right. It was retirement income, which, which by the way is everything income. except social security. <laughs> so the first section of the dashboard is going to just be all the demographic data. You can see, um, you know, how many people are under 18, how many people are 65 plus, how many people are 80 plus. Um, this is that number I mentioned where we just do a little bit of division and we figure out that in Eastport there's 1.4 working age folks for older people. Um, Eastport in particular, we also, because it's kind of a commuter city for, for workers, um, we included uh, towns within 25 miles. We did not do this for South Portland and Gray, um, but this was relevant for Eastport to know how many people are coming in and working or you know might have a job in Eastport, but live somewhere else or whatever. Um, I'm going to skip and then the, some some basic sort of ethnic um, and racial data. The next section is um, is household. Uh, I'm sorry, is income. Um, and this this section gets a little more wonky. But like I said, when we're doing your actual presentation, we'll spend a lot more time digging into the numbers in each section. Um, so, you know, median household income, Social Security income, how many people are in poverty. There's that men and women that we saw in Eastport right there. Um, how many folks have Medicaid, um, you know, what's the, in, and then just general information on what's the income limit, for instance, for you to qualify for SNAP. Um, and then uh, what's the income limit to qualify for Medicaid. The next section, uh, we focus on housing. So as just mentioned, um, like right here, 35% of older people in East live alone. You can see that's six percentage points higher than Washington County and, and quite a bit higher than the state of Maine too. Um, we break out the income of people who live alone, men and women. You can see across the board, men's income is generally higher than women's. Um, who lives with their spouse, who lives with another relative, who lives with their parents or parents-in-law, um, how, if they're responsible for a grandchild or not, um, also looking at things like who owns their house or um, is renting or who owns their house with a mortgage or not, because obviously having a mortgage is a bigger um, weight on your monthly finances than if you don't have a mortgage. Um, so looking at some of that, as well as the renters, uh, I'm not sure what it will look like in Millinocket, of course, but um, in Southern Maine, especially, a lot of older people are, are rent burdened, um, where they're spending a third or more of their monthly income on rent. Um, some of these two are hard because, you know, some of the census reports have 65 plus, other ones have 60 plus, so you just have to kind of you know, take it all as a picture. It's not, it's not like an algorithm where it's going to spit out like this is the biggest problem for older people in your town. Um, you have to, we're, we're going to have to sort of absorb it all together. Um, here's that section on the age of housing, whether the house is 30 years or older. You can see 90% of the homes in Eastport with somebody 65 and older as the main householder are more than 30 years old and 65% are more than 50 years old. Um, some of this, so all of that so far has been census data. There also is the opportunity to get some more local data from um, some of your local service providers or your subsidized housing communities or you know, the local food pantry, whatever. Um, if that's available, we can incorporate it into your dashboard. It's not always in every town and sometimes it's hard to track down. But so for instance, you know, I did some interviews with some of the property managers um, in Eastport and just asked, some of these questions, like how many have a resident service coordinator? How many offer transportation? Um, what's the average age of your residents? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. And, and, you know, of course we found out that there's, as, as is the story for all of Maine, there's not enough affordable housing units. Um, next section focuses on food insecurity. Most of this data is from um, either national groups like the national, um, Feeding America Network, Meals on Wheels, USDA, 
Uh, some of it is from the local food pantry in Eastport. So again, we can kind of tailor these sections for what your service providers are able to give. Um, but the part that's same across all the towns is what comes from the census. Uh, the next section focuses on those disabilities I mentioned. Um, and then we also got some data from the Eastport Health Center to find out. Um, so for instance, they told us 21% of their 65 and older patients in 2020 um, had a diagnosis of depression. Um, don't know why this got cut off, but um, how many are uh, you know, qualifying for a sliding fee program, things like that. So we can get, again, we can integrate some of that local data if you have it. Um, and then last but not least, we got a giant, giant, giant data set from state EMS about um, what EMS calls are for in each area and integrated that. So for Eastport, they had 340 EMS calls in 2020 of those 63% were for people over the age of 60. And then this is where Jess mentioned, like, this is the data that jumped out in South Portland because it was um, it was so high. Um, and then we break it down. So the rest of the data here is EMS data about falls specifically. Um, so of those, how many were transported or not transported? How many falls in, happened in each um, age band? So you can see in Eastport, it looks like the 80 to 89 group had the highest percentage of EMS calls for falls. And then by cause, if it was listed, it's not always listed, but it's interesting to look at when it isn't listed. Um, and then last but not least, and this is probably our, I think our weakest section of data because it's there's just not that much available. Um, transportation, 65 and older householders who have no vehicle available. Um, it's actually higher in Washington County than for Eastport. So almost 6% of 65 and older householders in Eastport don't have access to a vehicle, um, but that's about half the, the rate of the state and the county. So, you know, they maybe that's not an urgent issue there. Um, looking at who has driver's license and which age band they're in, because um, for instance, in, East, in Eastport, I think, yep. In Eastport, there was lots of car crashes for people over the age of 60. You can see 70% of um, their car crashes were for some with somebody over the age of 60. So we also looked at driver's licenses, just who still has one and what age band. And you can see that it's still pretty high. So 45% of men in the state of Maine who are over the age of 85 still have a driver's license. Doesn't mean they're driving, means they can drive. Um, and 50, you know, th these aren't that much lower, right? It stays at 44 and 45% pretty steadily down the age bands. Um, there's not really a significant drop off. So I think with that, I will stop sharing and give you guys, give it back to, to Larry or Jane or, or Jess. Um, but this is just a quick sample of what a dashboard could look like and what types of information you might be able to synthesize to make some decisions. Thanks, Effie. And, and I just want to, I guess, jump in to reiterate uh, what Jess had to say. And, and that is that uh, while our job is to, you know, sift through all the data that's out there and with your guidance, really hone in on what's going to be relevant uh, to your community, uh, really the onus is going to be on your task force to then, after you've identified what project it is you want to do, um, basically roll up your sleeves and, and go at it again with our assistance and and us providing uh, resources but um, you know and, and that kind of speaks to uh, the need to have a, a pretty diverse group of folks on your task force um, because you may decide transportation's an issue housing uh, or your, your falls rate might be high but if it's falls that could involve, you know, home repairs to to help address that. So uh, you'll want someone from your housing authority, whatever is there in Millinocket to to be there. Your, you know, Tom may want to be involved if if I don't know if uh, the the fire department also oversees the EMS service there. But whoever has connections with EMS might want to be involved with some of the decision making and the action planning around how are you going to you know, respond to those calls in a different manner, perhaps. 
So just wanted to underscore that a little bit. So I'll speak up now. <laughs> it's just like, wow, Effie, that was a ton, a ton of really excellent data. So it makes me wonder, you know, are we going to be working together so that we have a dashboard just like that for Millinock? Is that part of the end game? Yep. That's the yep. end game, not the end game. That's that's the mid game. Right, <laughs> right. Because I know, Larry, you're already talking yeah. about identifying a project. We've been doing some of this work through Thrive Penobscot and our early Thriving in Place initiatives and have identified some projects. And actually, our two AmeriCorps um, members, we're working on finalizing our work plan for our age-friendly community, you know, <laughs> work plan. So we're in the middle of a bunch of this stuff. So I can see where the data will be very important going forward for the municipality and for future projects that we want to identify. So, you know, I'm just wondering where along the line you're going to ask us to identify a project because we've got some things going on. And I, I think we want to get this, some of this data and maybe dig deeper or identify something else to start. I'll say that there is no reason in the world uh, that this data uh, once we see it, if it aligns with what we're talking about, then we might actually go to, okay, then what are, what are you doing? Like, we don't have to do something new. Um, and how can we measure it? Or how can we use data to, to show success um, and also bring more resources to your community? I mean, so, so some of this, I'll, I'll mention, I'll just say, you know, this is an experiment. I'm not going to lie to anybody, right? I mean, that's anything that's about change, right? You're you're trying to experiment, like, what can you do? And what we've learned so far, you know, is a that um, that there are a lot of systems barriers, and in each of the projects, we're actually working to resolve some systems challenges, right? So, um, and you know, ha have worked with a statewide EMS to change the way they record faults. Um, Cause like the data they gave us was so bad. <laughs> you couldn't, I, we, I mean, I think Effie must've spent hours going through this data. Like you couldn't, you know, what's a fall is a fall. We were like, well, you know, if somebody hit the ground it should be a, a fall, right? <laughs> it's not that easy. Um, anyway, uh, and you know, there's no housing authority in, in all of Washington County. Um, and so, you know, that's where the money goes from main housing to uh, do home repair um, initiatives are to either uh, your habitat or your or your um, housing authority. So we're like, all right, main housing, what's the alternative? Can we build another model? Um, because, you know, Washington County and certainly Eastport should have access to the same funds that other people have access to around Maine um, that are helping with these home repair initiatives. So, you know, so a part of this is solving for systems challenges, you know, and we try to, you know, sort of use your data and your voices and bring the right people to the table to solve for that, you know, those barrier challenges, the big, the bigger challenges. Um, and then, you know, if you're doing something that the data already supports, um, or maybe even magnifies, we can help you think about, you know, are there, um, can, can you get, uh, if you're having a really successful project, can we help you get funding to hire Muskie to, you know, or, or the um, Center on Aging to, um, to demonstrate the effectiveness of that program? And can we measure over time that you've been successful? And what is the impact of that to the state, to the, to the town too? I mean, so we wanna kind of like look at the big picture, like this is part of this is about the economy, right? I mean, mm -hmm. um, we want strong economies for our communities. Um, and a lot of these pieces are holding us back um, by, you know, sort of not, um, intentionally uh, planning for and meeting the needs, uh, sort of the new needs of our older our older citizens who are incredibly meaningful to our, right, our communities. So um, anyway, it, that's the big picture is we don't, there's no set formula to any of this, Jane. So, um, okay. so you know, we, we can take the data and go where you want to go with it. Very good. And so if I read in the chat correctly, Effie, you put together our dashboard. You That's part of like the TA, the technical assistance you're yeah. providing us. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. So and it's, it's really much more on the front end than like, it's one of the first things that your task okay. force will get um, is that full dashboard. And then, like I said, we spend a couple of meetings really diving into it. Um, and then from there starts the 
the, you know, the project and the action planning and, and thinking more about it. So the dashboard is really kind of on the front end of the MDASH um, partnership with the community. Very good. So I know um, we still owe you from the town, the MOU, signed MOU, and I know Peter was looking at that um, earlier and um, he may want to speak of it. <clears throat> Yes, I, I was. I, I located it. I found it. Um, <laughs> I, I, am prepared to, <laughs> I am prepared to sign it and, and, and send it over. Uh, great. That's terrific. According to our last council meeting. So that's great. <laughs> yeah. So based on the, the folks that are in the room here, um, what sector is missing from our task force? Or, you know, I, I'm going to put it out to the group to see who wants to be on the task force and then recruit from there. Um, are you seeing some gaps, some, something that you want me to um, target right away or? I didn't hear anybody from the food pantry. I'm, I don't know if you're talking to me, by the way. Uh, pardon me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually we do have food, we have okay, um, great. nobody identified themselves as such, but uh, Shelly Blaisdell. <laughs> Um, and right. we all wear multiple hats. So just name something. We all, somebody here will praise it and say, yep, I do that too. <laughs> um, we, we typically look at, you know, for, for core services, right? Housing, transportation, um, healthcare, uh, the community action program that serves your community and the AAA that serves your community. Um, and yes. then, you know, going any deeper. And so like the AAA will tell you, uh, and the cap will tell you the number of people who are getting lie heap and the number of people who are on meals on wheels, um, the number of people they serve. So they'll break it down for you by your town, um, which is just really helpful. Um, so, I mean, those are the, and you'll know better if you have all of that covered or not. <laughs> so is there a, is, can the group be too big? Like what is the, is there a number that should we, we should shoot for or just really make sure we have the representation that we, they want? The, the data piece, you know, is sort of if you consider um, we, you know, we typically suggest we'll, we would meet every other month. Um, and so I would say the first two meetings, we're going to be focused on data and and it's better to have more people than less. Actually, law enforcement is another, you know, another place, um, you know, we've had the, the sheriff of uh, Washington County was very engaged um, in the conversation. Um, and um uh, uh, so I would say for the first couple of months or the first couple of meetings, uh, too big, not really, because we're really trying to sort out who's got data, any data, Yep. <laughs> you know, um, uh, fires. I mean, I, I hang out actually with the, the fire, uh, um, the chief from the, well, you know, Tom, Thomas, <laughs> uh, and you know, he's, he's always about, um, uh, fires involving older people, you know, and if that's something, you know, fire safety is, is a big deal. And we've seen, you know, because of poverty, we've seen, you know, sort of excessive numbers of fires involving older people. Um, so, uh, I mean, I don't presuppose, we don't presuppose what the data sources are, but there are basic people, you know, who would have them. After that, once we decide, you know, sort of what the focus generally is, then we would, you know, you sort of peel some of those people away um, and then um, would be a more focused group. I mean, just to, to give you a general idea, the other task forces, maybe 15 to 20 people. Um, but as Jess just said, folks will come and go or opt in and out depending on what the focus is. And so will you, you'll let us know when that you're ready to have that first meeting when some debt. That okay. is Larry and he would be in touch with you. Gonna, um, okay. You Jane and Peter to, to set that up and figure out, you know, who, uh, when, when that, when that works for you. Um, and, you know, um, we have some prototypes, pretty easy, you know, uh, things already written that you can use to just invite people. Um, okay. And um, and really, folks are welcome. This isn't. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to duplicate anything. Uh, we want to be helpful to where you are, and every town is different in where they are. Um, so uh, want to just really be useful because uh, we're, you know, we're we're sort of going at this in a little bit of a different way, which is like. It does providing technical assistance and data in this instance, is it helpful to you where you are? 
Very good. And I was just noticing on the MOU, the end date is actually March of 2024. Do you expect it to go that? Uh, you know, we, or, or we, it could go that long if we have, we have typically, uh, so it's a, it is, we have another two years. Um, you know, we, we, that's, that is the end date of, you know, like our funding as we have, it. It. um, and absolutely we don't expect, uh, we expect that if you guys undertake something that you want to measure, it's going to take some period of time to be successful. Right. I mean, if you're really trying to, for instance, I mean, like, wow, South Portland bit up it out a lot they're like we want to reduce falls in south portland okay well that's going to take some time <laughs> and you got to measure that over a period of years you know to see if what you're doing has impact um so uh that's why it was sort of built as a longer project um so we do you know we will do a refresh in a year of the data to see if it you know anything has changed um but really uh, that's as that's as long as we can go with our existing funding right now understand very good. And, and we have encouraged the other uh, municipalities to kind of go after low hanging fruit. I mean, things that are relatively easy, low cost. I mean, yeah, if you try to change the world, you know, with, with one project or one fell swoop, you're, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. So. So does anybody have a question um, about this project before we like tackle the rest of our agenda, which is very short? <laughs> I know I'm really excited about this project. We're, we're excited to work with you, really. Yeah. Can't wait to see what your data says. <laughs> it's going to tell a story. We can't wait to the story it's that going to tell a story. Us. Every town has. Us. Yeah. Tell the story. No, it's going to be great. So thank so I'll you. I'll go ahead and I'll connect with you, Jane. We'll find a time for the first meeting. And, and it might be good if uh, we make that when Epi has some preliminary data, maybe in some specific areas for us to talk about. It won't be a full dashboard, obviously, but just to kind of whet the group's interest. So. That sounds great. Sounds like a great. plan. All right. right. And you guys are welcome to stay. You are welcome <laughs> to do what you need to do now. We're just going to tackle uh, the, a couple things now. So great. All right. Thank so you. thanks, Have Jess. Have a yeah. great night. Take care. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. As this screen shifts around. So I hope you're all excited. That was very exciting to hear all that. So, um, so I wanted to make sure that both Barbara and Sarah had a chance just to say hello. I know Barbara's new to this group. Sarah, perhaps you've been on one other call. I'm not sure. I can almost see you in the screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, no, we had our first age-friendly uh, committee meeting. I think we've had one since I've been here. So yes. And Barbara, <laughs> yeah, I got, I'm just I'm just putting it out there. If you want to talk to the group, so um, part of your work is the action plan for age friendly Millinocket. And yes. do you just want to share the plan going forward because it is due to this? Um, well, we got to send it to the state, and then they'll send it to the national um, age friendly, the network of age friendly communities because we have to have it approved um, right. to stay in good standard. Um, and so we have a deadline, and you you are working on that and sort of have. A, a strategy for us to get there? Yes. Do you want to address it? Or you want to... Um, well, we're working using the domains as a frame mm -hmm. and we just received a wonderful email from Jane <laughs> designating which aspects from the Gazetteer have been addressed so far by the committee and which are pending, which have been completed, which are pending. And we're going to integrate those into what Sarah has already drafted as an eight domain action plan. And so over the next couple of days, we're going to be updating that draft. And Mary Beth Paquette suggested that we send you domains as chunks so that you don't get overwhelmed by too much material at once. And of course, it'll be interactive before we come up with our quote pre-final version, you'll be giving us feedback. But I have a question um, based on today's very exciting presentation. Without that data, how does that affect what we're going to be doing with the action plan? Because it don't seems worry about it. Okay. Don't worry about right. it. As I was okay. say, because that sounds so exciting. And yeah, I no. You know, we'd it, love okay. to have all that data, but. Yeah, so uh, if, if anything in that action plan that you're creating, we could, 
you can include a part that, you know, the data is can continually, you know. Right. Yeah, it's a living document. We talked about that. So others on the call that have been part of the age friendly um, committee forever since we right. started. The document that I shared with Barbara and Sarah today was, remember how we went through, uh, we had a couple of different sessions where we went through the gazetteria, the gazetteria and anything that had to do with age friendly. We said, yep, um, let's make sure that's included into our action plan or, or nope, we're not ready. Let's not put that in there because we didn't want to overdo over promise. So that was the, right. I can resend it to you guys, but that's the document I shared with them since they're both coming in pretty fresh. Um, and so we, we did go through that, go through that process as far as looking at the yeah. gazetteer and anything that was related to Thrive Penobscot or age-friendly work, we highlighted it and narrowed it down, so. Yeah, I guess I still have a question. Um, um, Jess was pretty much emphasizing aging, issues to do with aging. And that's what I initially thought the age-friendly AmeriCorps project was. And now it's merging more in my mind with an all ages inclusive plan for intergenerational uh, mm -hmm. livability, but she definitely emphasized problems for older people. So, uh, yeah. So remember, she's from the Maine Council on Aging, so okay. that's her work. That's her. That's your lane. Um, right. But this age friendly, um, the network of age friendly communities (AARP) it is across right. the lifespan. Right. So. Right. Yeah, I know it gets, it really, it was confusing to me at the beginning too, <laughs> thinking yeah. we were just going to concentrate on older adults, but right. it's aging, we're all aging from, you know, so it's birth um, um, from crypto. So is, there, is there anything in that regard? Is there anything in the gazetteer that isn't about age, an age friendly community in that regard? If it's all to make it more livable, right? What pieces it's, it's, are only age friendly? <laughs> In the broad sense, when we went through that planning um, process, just some things were identified. We'll we'll probably have to have an um, a conversation, okay, <laughs> you know, yeah. another conversation about this, you know, okay. um, at another time. And it, it, okay, I can we can we can work on that. The understanding okay. of that. So and that's what I've been saying right along. Everybody yeah. that's doing all kinds of great work in Millinocket right now, it's all age friendly, right? Because it's Absolutely. addressing someone's age. So I say jump Absolutely. in the bandwagon, get on the bus. We're all going down the age friendly road together, right? So sure. I can put it all in the action plan. We're all going to be happy. <laughs> that's how I'm feeling at five o'clock tonight. Yeah, we're not going to overwhelm us. Age. <laughs> a little, little chunky. So anyway, so thank you. I'm glad you're on board and that this committee is growing and the yeah. age friendly movement, you know, we're going to get that out there. We're working right, on that. Sure. Um, and just as a reminder, um, which started with this group, the Katahdin Snowdown is this Sunday, February 20th. Flyers are out there um, and posted. And I know some of you have been on some of the planning calls and are aware of that. Right. Um, so that's um, started as our challenge grant from last year. And so we're making that yeah. annual. Um, there is a community center survey. So I've been working with the Center on Aging for a survey that we want to get out to the community. It, I, I got the final version today. Um, there will be a link for people to do the survey. Um, I got to figure out how to perhaps get some paper copies out there too. So it just got finalized. So stay tuned. I will get that out, um, send some emails and we'll figure out a way to get that out broadly. Um, and Sand Bucket Program is underway. Um, thanks for... Chief Malcolm, Fire Department, Public Works for making that happen. Yep, and you'll notice that I did change the wording on that. It doesn't say, you know, sand bucket for seniors. It's really sand buckets program. It's for everybody. Making that more inclusive um, if you need help getting it, um, getting sand. So do you want to speak about, Tom, I know you went and got more buckets. Um, how are you doing on that? How are you getting call, fielding a lot of calls? You want to just give a quick, up, quick update? Yeah, it's, it's been going very well. Um, I finally got my people to understand that we don't give a new bucket every time. <laughs> we give you a bucket and we'll come get it or we'll bring sand to you. Uh, and we've also had some calls recently for people that have places for us to put the sand. Uh, some people have actually built boxes in their garages and you know, I don't care, we'll, however you, wherever you need. Uh, that's worked out really well. And uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're doing four or five a week. Uh, not all new ones. A lot, a lot of them now are, are just refilling, refilling. But uh, it's going good. Great, very good service. Thank you. Yes. 
And so as far as the next meeting date, so we're going to hear um, from our folks about that project. So I'll have to figure out when that meeting date is. But for this, our regular committee meeting, is everybody okay with this time if we went with the third Tuesday? So like our next meeting um, would be like March 15th at 4 p.m. Does that work if we just try to establish that and know that we're going to have some work group meetings at other times? Luke? Yep. Lou, are you Lou, are you talking to us? You are on you if you wanted us to hear. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. Okay. <laughs> that time works for me. We'll stick with it until we hear or find out that it's not good. Great. 505, we're doing pretty well. Are there any, is there anything else that anybody wants to share before we? I guess I had, oh, go ahead, Peter. I will uh, yield to Diana. Go, you, you jump in there first. I just had a question for Barbara and Sarah. I, I guess I wanted to understand, you'll be following up with each domain as kind of a separate email to this group to get feedback on it. it is it going to be like in a Google Doc form? Or I guess just what amount of detail um, of feedback would you like from this group? Do you well, know yet? So and it's okay if you don't. <laughs> No, nope, I've shared it to several people uh, in Google Docs um, as the age-friendly plan. It's not the publisher version. That was what Jane sent originally. But then I worked on it as a Google Doc. And so it has all the eight domains. Uh, I think you made a comment once at the beginning of that. Um, yeah, I, I've seen it one. personally, but I wasn't yeah, sure if the rest yeah. of the group so had it thought... or if it was going to be sectioned out. Well, we'll, we'll work at... Um, I guess we just kind of discussed today what we want to do, but we thought we'd each um, pick a domain each week. And because we have basically six weeks to get it pretty much ready to go. So maybe send two domains at a time. Right, we're sending two domains at a time. And so I think, you know, have them done and send them on in some kind of a, you know, email format or an attachment um, so that they can be looked at once we feel like they're ready for your comments. You know, does that seem reasonable? Yeah, that makes sense. I just wanted to make sure yeah. I understood yeah. what, what we should all be expecting and that, right. you know, that's something you're, you're asking of the full yeah. group. Like I might work on health domain, health and wellness. She might work on social interaction. Um, and then we'd take those two and send them to you and say, okay, what do you think of these two? And we want to do that four times. So four different weeks, meaning then you get your eight domains in then that month of March because we really need to have them go ready to come to you, Diana. I'm volunteering you a little bit for some of your great um, polishing skills. You're so good at that with making it look real pretty and uh, lots of colors and graphics and all that. So I think that- Thank you, my happy to polish. Good. Yeah. And I know so you like to do that. And so I'm, I don't wanna take that joy away from you, right? <laughs> how, how would it be if we sent it to Jane to forward to the people that you think should get it or? Sh that would be fine. Perfect, okay. yeah. that's okay. a good idea. Yeah. And I do sense. want to remind you, and you're thinking about your timeline and getting it in, this is something that the municipalities submit. So the counselors right. need to see it and okay it before it gets right. sent sure. on. Because, yeah. And we do yeah. need an executive letter of some type. Yep, it I'll work like, on that. Yep. So yep. someone from town councilor. I don't that. know if I know too many people from the council, but I'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to pull some strings. Okay, good. So can I just ask, I'm new, I'm just kind of listening in. Is there any help or anything you guys need for Snowdown that we can, or any of the volunteers I work with can help with? Do you guys need anything? You got to like, everything's Everything's pretty good. You can talk to um, Barbara and Sarah. They've been, they were on a meeting. Uh, like table. It, it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can just. Uh, Coleman did mention he's working on getting all the skis and equipment from the gear library over there. And so um, organizing that, I think. Um, so maybe ask Coleman about that too. Yeah. Maybe the snow painting if you need extra hands. Um, yeah, but, we could. Yeah, Maybe we could. it depends on how cold it is. We may want to have a little bit of relief just to get in the warming hut while someone else takes over for a half hour. Yeah. You can ring some participants. <laughs> yeah. Just come. Let's come. Yeah, that's right. So, Peter, do you want to round us out here? <laughs> uh, my question is just maybe it's been. Um, it's been mentioned, but I'm not remembering. Recommendations for 
um, <clears throat> folks we'd like to reach out to to join the, the group, the task force group? Uh, should we be sending those to you, Jane, or? Uh... Yeah, that would be fine. And I, it was my, um, my oversight, I should have re reached out to Andrew Crusoe from Eastern Area Agency on Aging. I had seen him before. He's overseeing um, the programs here, the Meals on Wheels. Um, he's got a new role. And so he's in a position to be able to attend these. So Eastern Area for sure. Um, yeah, sure. yeah. So if you guys ha else have other suggestions, I was thinking about somebody else from the hospital as well. So yeah, email yeah, I me. I do have a couple of ideas I'll pass along already. And I think they, they had made it, you know, I say the more the merrier to open it up. So perhaps it is another public meeting like this and other people can join us. There's no reason to um, not do it that way, but we also want to target certain um, like sectors so that we have. And, and just, for, just for clarification, the, um, the people we may want to join in on that group, should they be from this community or their, if their work relates to this work, and they are based elsewhere, but cover this community, similar to some folks on Mobilize Katahdin Coalition. Um, is that appropriate for this group? I or think so. I, be based locally. Well, as long for that data group, like uh, I'm thinking that there isn't anybody locally um, from Penquist, right? So we're gonna have to reach mm -hmm. out to see if this Penquist that covers this, there's nobody that sits in an office here in Millinocket, but there's Penquist staff that cover this region. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. So I might need to I just guess, put out I guess that an example would be like Kai London. Oh, from Good Shepherd. Would he be, you know, considered somebody who's related to that, you know, this work, but not local, but, you know, covers this area? If he's the right for, person from Good Shepherd. So I know Kai from the past work as well. And I know Shelly has the connections with Good no. Shepherd. Yeah, Jenny Jones is our new uh, Penquist in our Penobscot in Piscataquis County person. Yeah. Oh, good shepherd. Yeah. Good shepherd. Great data. Yeah. And they know yeah. all the food pantries. And they know yeah. food issues. If you're looking for right. food insecurity issues. Yeah. Sure. But I know Kai's involved in some of the data pieces too. So I know you probably have a relationship with him, Peter. Do you know him? Is that how you thought of him? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I know him. And then, and then from, from participation early in the mobilized Katahdin coalition, sure. um, yeah. I do know that he's, he's made some advancements there within that organization. Yeah. So Shelly probably has a, a I have Kai's contact information if you'd like me to reach out to him. Um, and I think um, Andrew Caruso would be great with Eastern Area Agency and um, Jenny Jones, maybe from Good Shepherd. Maybe do you have like a school resource officer or anybody on the police department that kind of handles community stuff? That might be a good. Resource. Well, I, I immediately thought of Don Boldick. Um, yeah. When he talked about police law enforcement, and I know he likes he to get involved. He generally handles things at the mm -hmm. school as well. I, I was even thinking, um, you know, Joe Joe Clark. Yes. You know, with his involvement with um, housing, you know, senior housing. We need housing. <clears throat> yeah. I'm on that board. I'm on the board there. Oh, good, Louis. Yeah, and the housing study that we were just um, provided for, for Maine. So we'll want to make sure that we share that with Effie um, so that she includes that in the data dashboard and that. Right. So good. Yeah, so as you're thinking about people brainstorming people. Um, and then anybody just, that works with like your um, support group um, place or, or your senior citizens groups or anything like that, or the nursing home, if there's a, a community person that does any kind of older adult programs in the community might be a good person as well. Just a thought. Yeah, yeah so feel free to share. I'll, I'll be, I'm assuming, Peter, you assigning me point person to this? That's Would you group. like to be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, can, I, can take, I can take the requests, for sure. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't or know. I, Maybe I will share them with you either way. Absolutely. Maybe. Maybe somebody from the uh, uh, Stearns Assisted Living Complex. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're seeing your programs over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Penquist oversees those programs. I was going to so. say Penquist. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, we'll continue to brainstorm and we can, um, you know, communicate by email and we'll watch for our first meeting um, with this group again. So thank you all for joining. <laughs> It's been a Thank great you. meeting.
Um, stay tuned. Important. Watch your email. Have a Thank great you. evening. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Right. Good night.